Hey team, uh, it's been a while since I made a video. Um, obviously it's because of the, the lockout laws. I know we're still allowed to fish, so I'm still heading out, but nothing major. Um, pretty sure the rule is now that you can go with one other person as long as you stick to the rules. The one thing that's not clear is whether or not you can be in the same car. So I don't know. So I'm gonna head out tomorrow and uh, I'm gonna try out a rig. And I've had a few people asking me about this rig. It's the, um, we call it the feed the family rig because uh, someone called it cheat mode rig. Um, but I know others are calling it, um, it can either be Islander rig or the Maori rig. So I don't know, man. Like, I'm hoping that none of the, my Islander brothers and Maori brothers get upset, but that's what, that's what they call it. But um, yeah, we call it the feed the family rig because it's, it's such, a, such a deadly lure um, and it's so cheap to make. So a couple of things you need. Um, a floaty. Now, I actually prefer the foam floats because they're just a bit more, they last longer. These ones, they tend to split in the middle and water gets in and you're done. You can't use it anymore. So some of the boys, what they do is they tape it up. So a floaty. Um, two liters, so have a heavier liter, possibly a good liter, and I'll explain to you why. And uh, a cheaper liter, preferably something that's a bit more stiff, like a harder. So these ones are Hercules, you can get the pen ones, they're really there's hard type um, liters, um, and get them a bit lighter. So the other one was 60 pounds, and this one is 40 pounds. Again, I'll explain to you a bit later. Sinkers, get a couple of sinkers, depending on heavy, how heavy you want it to be. Have a small split sinker. Swivels. Long shank hooks. Um, these, these, these are, I don't know why I have so many of them. Must have been for this. And some beads. I know Risky, uh, the Coconut King, he hates it being called cheap bone. So let's start with the, with the, the floaty end. The thing I do is uh, tie up the, the heavy, heavier leader onto one of the swivels, just a simple uni knot. Three, four. Clip the tag end, give it about, I don't know, half a meter, maybe less. Alright, so there you go. Now these are where the beads come into it because when you're casting this all day, the floaty, the sinker, it all bounces around. Hey guys, also, uh, you probably hear the rain, it's, it's raining outside, so uh, just bear with it, you'll hear the rain a bit. Uh, let's pack this up. So, get a bit in there. Get your floaty in there. And the good thing about these, they um, they rattle. Apparently, that attracts the fish also. Get another bead in there. Sinker on. Now, it depends on heavy. The heavier you get, obviously, the harder it is to cast. The heavier it is to cast, but the further you potentially can cast. So it also depends on how heavy your uh, how heavy your floaty is, whether or not your floaty can handle. Otherwise, it'll uh, it'll sink to the bottom. You don't want that. So I put two on here. And I need one more. What's going on here? But I need three. There you 
There you go. And the final thing you need to do, ah, too much, is then put on another swivel. <coughs> Some of the boys do this differently. I'll just try to keep it simple, guys. It's, it's not rocket science. Again, uni knot. Now the reason why I go heavier on this leader is just in case I get snagged, it will just snap off the bottom part of the of the of the lure and you'll keep the top part. So it's heavier, it's a heavier leader. So there you go. It should face that way. So the sinkers are on the bottom, the float is on the top. Now, to the bottom part of it, use the lighter leader. Some of the guys go three meters, some of the guys do two meters, two and a half, some people go even longer, I'll go two meters. It looks long when you're, when you're setting it up, but when you're actually casting it, it turns out it's, it's actually not that long, you'll see it in the water. So two meters, what's that? So, one, two, just a bit more. There you go. Tie one end to the bottom, the bottom swivel. Okay, again, uni knot. The other end is where the skirt goes. Of course, I forgot to mention the skirt. Let me just get that. Okay, so this is the skirt. You can get these from any tackle shop. Tackle shop rubber skirt. I, I prefer the smaller ones. I know they just. I used to get more hits with the smaller ones. So you get that. You puncture it with it with a hook straight through the middle. And make sure it goes all the way through because you're going to push the leader through this. There you go. That's the leader. I've deliberately, actually, here we go. You cut it in an angle so there's a pointy end. Get that through. Now, we, we always try to, try to do this before the day before because it does take a bit of time some of the boys what they do is they prepare a few of these just in case they lose a couple there you go straight through boom all right now from there the reason why we use a long shank hook is then it goes all the way in and it kind of sticks out like that Put that through. I do a different knot for this one. I use the, I don't know what they call this. I think it's the opposite uni. I don't know what they call it. Two, three, four. So I twist that and then you put it through the loop at the bottom. So it doesn't actually stop it from going all the way into the, uh, the skirt. Go. Cut the tag end. There you go. Now, with the split ring, the 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 the, 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 the split sinker comes into it is I put this here. Adds a bit of weight to the to the skirt when you cast it, and it kind of has a better action in the water. And kind of, um, I find that it helps because it tangles up because of the long leader, but this kind of stops it from being tangled. All 
Right. That's it there. And then you push that through. And the sinker should be a double O or a triple O, nothing bigger guys, otherwise it will just sink. So that sinker then sits right on the head of the skirt. Get in there, son. There you go. And there it is. See that? In the water, it looks like bait fish. You can't resist it, man. So the way it works, you cast this out. This then becomes like a, what do they call those? Um, at the front. Um, I forgot what they call it, but it attracts the fish. Sometimes they try to hit this. Um, and then, yeah, further up, they see a little bait fish at the back. And they'll just smash it. So there you go, guys. Um, that was the uh, Feed the Family Rig aka cheat rig, aka islander rig, aka maori rig, aka coconut rig um, but yeah man this thing is an absolute gun to the point where we're sick of using it you know what I mean it just you're almost guaranteed to hook up whatever's around a um, few of the boys at times catch something big with it it's pretty rare it's usually a smaller fish because it's just I mean you look at the you look at the bait like look at the lure it's a tiny lure um, but yeah good luck give it a go um, I don't know, if you're outside of New South Wales, try it up north, you might hook up on something bigger. But over here, it's mainly Sambos, Benitos, Taylors, sometimes Rat Kingies. Good luck! Lock it. Lock it. Ui. Get it up. Get it up. Yeah, that's it. You're good. You're good. Hey.